Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. D and D, not dying. Um, so last time, you guys decided that you were gonna try and tackle the fire newt infested uh, dwarven halls of Rakamar. It went uh, well. I mean. It went okay. You're all alive. Uh, a lot of fire newts are dead, as are several of their mounts. But there's a lot more of them than there are of you. And as a result of that, um, we left off with you guys kind of hauling ass back up the steps out toward the uh, exit of the mountain back into the Valley of Lost Honor. Um... And so I guess we pick up with the party, like, just making it outside. The sounds of, like, the screeching mounts of the fire newts uh, echoing along the stone corridor behind you. And, uh, yeah, you emerge to this, this uh, like, lava-scarred uh, valley that has just these, uh, these like, chasms of lava that have kind of opened up between um, various bits and pieces of actual walkable terrain. So, um, that being the case, what's the plan, as you know that there's a small army of fire newts trailing not all that far behind you? Um, Run away. Yeah, as we get out... uh... I'll say, I'll look over to Zack and I'll say, you think you can carry Thorv for a tiny bit? Because he's... Oh, Thorv's hasted. Yes, but when that runs gonna out... Stop really soon. Yeah, he's oh. going to stop. So... Did you say Thorv's tasted? Hasted. Hasted. Oh. Tasted? <laughs> <laughs> Spit at him. They didn't bite him. Oh, I guess it doesn't make sense. Uh, let's just run fast. That's our plan. You know what? I got a question. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. Never mind. I, it was stupid. <laughs> just gonna see if okay. I can counterspell the active haste spell and just nullify everything. But no. That's if you rude. could dispel magic. Yeah. That could be a thing, but the spell would still end. Oh. And as such... <laughs> it still affects him? Okay. It would still happen just earlier. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Um, okay. So you're going to run. Uh, Azaka is like, she probably, like, she would slow down. She would have to slow down it, to be able to carry Thor. A, so. It would be for a, a second. I mean, how isn't Thor fast enough that he would end up ahead of us? And then when he stops, we'd just catch up to him and then we'd all go. Yeah, probably. Good, good point. Yeah. Thor, run ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Azaka, be on standby. If Thor stops and we run past, just grab him. <laughs> okay. And I, so I'll, guys... I'll run next to Azaka, too. I'm going to try to... If Thor stops and we run past, I'm going to try to grab him as well and help her drag him. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we really need to worry about Thor because at this point he's traveling... 75. fucking fast uh, it's I don't know it's ridiculous like way faster than you guys Bye. Um, so <laughs> uh, that being the case you guys run 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 haste lasts for is it a minute one minute yep yeah okay so so yeah that probably runs its course and as a matter of fact it probably already has run its course by the time you emerge from the mountainside because it was a good quarter mile or so um, just worth of like climbing down the uh, stairs and halls to Rakamar itself. Um, yeah. He can't, so this is, yeah. He can't take an action, right? For one round. He basically can't do anything for one turn. Yeah. He's okay. all tired. But yeah. Anyway, um, you guys emerge with a, a decent lead 
on these things, uh, but you do hear them coming up behind you relatively soon. Uh, so you sound like you just want to keep running, and is there a plan other than just keep running? <laughs> Run till we can find a place where we can hide, which is far enough away from them that they shouldn't find us. Okay. Um, so, you run back down the mountainside uh, the way Honestly, that you had... A... I was, sorry, ahead. I was just going to say, if we could lo just find a way to lose them, so just get out of sight and just hide, then we can That's throw the dome That's what I'm saying. Up. Okay, I gotcha. I thought you meant take off and just try to ra outrace them. No. Well, okay. the, the hide part meant we're not gonna hide when they can see us. Okay. Just think of it like uh, Assassin's I Creed. No, I, I got you. I, I thought she meant just run and try to find a place to, to hide. I was saying just get out of eyesight and hide. But yeah, I think we're saying the same thing. Yeah, that's like Assassin's Creed. Yeah. We, we need to get run to get out of sight. Okay. Yeah, get, get out but of sight, I... but like quickly. <laughs> Um, and we can make your hut look like a boulder or something. Do we have a whole minute to build a hut? Well, for if they run past and we can hide, then I would assume yeah. we have. What, you're ruining my mansion concept. I'm sorry. Well, it's a seventh level there's spell. There's a more sorry. advanced spell for that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll let you know I'm when I find out when I can get that. What's that spell called? That is Mordenkainen's Magnificent Mansion. Yeah. It's a, it's higher than a fifth, I know that. I think it's a sixth. <sighs> Never gonna get it. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's let's run where we think they won't find us for over a minute, and then we can hide in a <laughs> rock looking hut. Okay, everybody uh, make make a perception check with disadvantage as you are like sprinting and just scanning for something. Oh hang on, I just accidentally opened up the edge. <laughs> Fucking Grail mod with the fucking clutch. <laughs> Ooh, zero oh, disadvantage. How about a natural 19? Oh, we all did so good. <laughs> Guys. Relatively speaking, yeah. Eric, we, we, we are good at this. We genuinely did good. <laughs> Alright, you know what? I'm, I'm going to disconnect. You're much better at fleeing. Because um, I, I like went red bar for a second and it was, it was bad. Uh, anyway. Right it was back. just us being accepted. <laughs> you know what would be fun uh, is to make one of you start laughing hysterically. Well, see, I was I was <laughs> That would be funny because then you would be dead. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's dramatic. I mean, that's kind of I mean, it's also of. accurate though. Yeah. I was oh, thinking about God. flying Thor, just if he started falling behind a little bit, because then he could have a 60-foot fly speed. You guys never let me have fun. I have centipedes. <laughs> yeah, I do. That's not something you can control. I mean, don't, uh, you, don't kill my centipedes. You donate, this, get rid of your centipedes, and therefore you are having fun. Why would you get rid of my centipedes? Because they're gross bugs. Excuse me? <laughs> they make sure that we don't get attacked by spiders in the night. It's yeah, true. fool. I saved $16 at Party City today. I welcome the followers of Wolf. By eating spiders? No, by, like, stuff on sale or something. <laughs> I love it when two conversations miss. Ah, never mind about it. I didn't mean to make it a topic of conversation. No, it was Why just... did you say it? <laughs> it was Don't great. worry about it. <laughs> Let's talk about the running. <laughs> Let's talk about the running. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so. You guys, you, you run out of the cave, down the mountainside, and um, about halfway down, uh, Groilmod notices uh, kind of a, a a little outcropping that's like out of the way enough 
that it doesn't really draw the eye. And so if you guys can, if you can maneuver over there without um, drawing too much attention or, or disturbing things too much, you might have a shot at uh, hiding out and possibly having these things just run right by you. So, um, since you guys do have a lead and you can be relatively careful about it, I'll say just give me straight stealth checks. <laughs> wow. What is happening right now? Oh, we're so wow. game. <laughs> this game wants us to succeed. Okay. Ed is so proud because Sirene hides the best she ever hid in her life. I just imagine the reason Groyal Mods was 12 is he's going, guys, over here, come on, come on. And he's like <laughs> yeah, chasing me and Thor us. down. <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh yeah you, you you like dart over there and 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 cover yourselves up as much as you can behind this outcropping and you hear the approaching uh like screeches and the hisses of the fire newts and their mounts and let's see let's see how things work out is there a way could visually count you know count here how many i think there are without giving away my position because it's much well, more important to that me I the methodology not... you want to use if you just want to go by by hearing i would say it's probably with disadvantage i mean if we're covered by check. branches i assume that there is like little gaps so if i could peer out one of those um, I mean, I, I think it's more about actually having like solid stone between you guys and oh, okay, and the things following you. Question so. for you. I oh yes, sorry, I thought, thought that to was put done. my ear to the ground since horses' hoof beats travel well. These are through ground okay. as... well. I mean, they're really more like dinosaurs, but still. Yeah. Well. Foot beats. Okay. Whatever. Gotcha, gotcha. The ground. So, okay. Uh, if well, yeah. I can estimate, make a perception check with disadvantage. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't I even know why I asked. Exactly the same. It's is the same exact thing. I rolled a twenty and a twenty-one last time. Why? Why do I even ask for checks tonight? Like, <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> Okay. Time to roll some hit dice, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so so you listen, and uh, sounds like if you had to, if you had to ballpark it. Uh, probably another six or so of the mounts. Um, pretty heavy on on their feet. Probably actually with riders. Um, and then some, some lighter ones that suggest, I don't know, maybe a, a matching force of, uh, infantry. Okay. We'll store that knowledge away because I am not being loud right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, you, you listen and, and all of you eventually hear these things go running by right past your hiding place without noticing you. Ooh. And yeah, they, they continue on the kind of like winding path down the mountainside. And um, it's, I, I think you're situated in such a way that should you choose to peek over the edge, you can, you can get a good look at uh, what they're up to as they continue down on their hunt for you. I am going to begin casting a spell that takes 10 minutes to cast. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you fib, are you going to pop the dome up here? Or are we moving? Uh, if Sierra is casting a spell, then I'll probably cast. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> up for a minute. So as yep. soon as that pops up, I'm going to sit down, pull, <laughs> pull out my book, and uh, I'm going to start casting. Uh, I'm going to cast Find Familiar. I think okay. with that we are going to specify that her dome is fully enclosed in this spot, and so whatever we covered doesn't change, you know? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. All right. So, uh, yeah, yeah, a minute or so goes by, and um, this, like, what else is uh, anybody who's not, like, taking up their time uh, casting a spell doing? Anything um, especially... I don't know, like tactical or what have you? Nope, taking a nap. <laughs> okay. Um, how many people do we have in our group? Um, so, I mean, there's five PCs and a Zaka, and, well, the dwarves actually still have Blue Boy. Yeah, so, so we have six. Yeah, you have six. Okay. Tell me if we ever notice them returning. Okay. Um, and tell me when 10 minutes is up so I can cast my spell. All right. I, I think like a few minutes into um, the the casting of Sirene's like longer 10 minute spell here, um, you hear uh, yelling from down in the valley. Like they found something. Like, are being I mean, attacked? you you haven't heard the fire newts do anything really akin to yelling or shouting. Um, they tended to speak in, suffice to say, different forms. Um, but yeah, uh, it sounds like there are some humanoids that they might have come across and are throwing down with at the moment. Oh, didn't they say that they were going to back us up once we went in? I don't think so. I think Groyal Mod said, no, I'm a dragon slayer and we got this. Hmm. Eric? Yes? Which one of us recalls correctly if <laughs> the dwarves were there or not? Um, I mean, they, so basically what the dwarves had committed to for sure was, uh, like, guarding the the road leading to Rakamar. Okay. Um, Is that where that sounds? More or less, yeah. Okay. How many minutes are we into my spell? Say, I don't know, like three or four. Yeah, as soon as I hear that, I stop. <clears throat> and I'm charging out. Damn it. <laughs> You're charging out, like, of the dome? For now, yes. Um, okay. Oh, okay. I guess so. we're gonna go save them. <laughs> oh. so. I'm not gonna be much help in this. <laughs> I'm going to cast some spells on myself really quick. How many times can I cast Cure Wounds? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going, well, Laura, I'm going if you, to if you move, break my spell. Your spell is going to... Your bubble's gone. Mm -hmm. So you got to... You would have to almost stay here. Or dissipate your oh, bubble. Oh, are we not giving up on the bubble? No, I was going out because I have most of my spells and most of my health left, so I'm going to go throw a couple spells and then fucking okay. run. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll stay many... here then. How, what, how terrible does everyone look? <laughs> I mean, I've got one little chunk missing out of me, but these guys do half damage. <laughs> Everything they do is half damage to me, other than stabbing. How is how is Groyal Mod doing? I don't see him on here. Groyal Mod has nine hit points. Okay. Groyal Mod is well, bleeding I out of am... his everything. How many do you have, Thorv? Eight. Okay, so I have the least amount of hit points. So I am going to heal <laughs> myself first. <laughs> oh. 
Um, cast that. And gain 12 hit points for myself. Do you think we've been in here for an hour and have taken a short rest? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you've been in there for about three minutes. Call it five minutes if we're being generous. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to give a cure wounds to. This one's to Groil Mod. It's to. Okay. All of the cure wounds that were just rolled are such shitty rolls. <laughs> <laughs> um, and me being me, I am going to and follow Lucius after casting these. Okay. I guess I feel slightly better and I'll just follow behind him. I guess. A good, a good distance. <laughs> All right. Fid can um, stay here in case we need to retreat and hide. <laughs> I yeah. I don't know if it doesn't say anything about if you're allowed to re-enter or not. It just says. Oh yeah. No. Oh, okay. So absolutely, how this works is if you leave, it pops. If anybody else who you you allow into it uh, comes or goes, that's fine, and they are able to basically come and go as they please. Okay. Yeah, it's an open doorway to us, closed doorway to everything and everyone else. Yeah. Which is pretty handy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Azaka uh, tags along with you guys as well. What's she doing? She's, um, she's taken some damage. Like, this is probably on the more hurt side that you've seen Azaka, but at the same time, she's pretty fucking tough <laughs> okay not not that I can really heal her but I just want to know if I need to uh, <laughs> spare the dying some people <laughs> yeah I mean my she, trips. she doesn't really even look bloodied yet so okay cool yeah um okay so you uh first I want to try to get a fit. vantage point if I can from above okay um, yeah, so that's easy enough. Like, I think, I think every, everyone down below is so preoccupied with combat that it's easy enough to just kind of peer over, um, you know, one, like, slightly raised bit of stone, and, uh, what you see down below is a, a battle that is going on, um, basically on either side of a lava-filled chasm. Um, with the fire newts on the near side, uh, you know, some of them still atop their mounts, um, others on foot engaged in, uh, like hand to hand combat with a smallish force of these albino dwarves. And you notice that as more of the dwarves, uh, come running into battle, they take flying leaps from the far side of the, uh, lava chasm, and they jump like 40 feet across. Jesus, so they're like dwarf tossing <laughs> themselves. <laughs> cool. They're literally little moving cannonballs. <laughs> yeah, so so they just like fling themselves across the, the, the massive like gap where if they fell, I mean, it's, it's like certain death. Knowing that, well, assuming that they um, are no more immune to fire damage than you guys are. Um, but yeah, so they're just like Master Chief in their way over this ship, just flying like... Ugh, it's, it's... Yeah. So uh, the, the clash that's going on here is right now kind of at a stalemate, um, although you, you do see that more of the uh, fire newts are kind of maneuvering around to uh, kind of surround the incoming dwarves and uh, as they dismount from these big scaly creatures that they ride uh, the, the mounts seem to get a little more involved in combat um, so well, then we can come up behind them and well, we have sandwiches how, depending on how far away they are for me I'm going to stay right here <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
Well, I think from this vantage point, you're probably looking at um, somewhere like 100 feet. All right. Um, well, I guess as I run up and see that, I'm going to look back and I'll say, cover my ass, and I'm going to step right off the fucking edge, and I'm going to cast <laughs> Fly on myself. <laughs> and I'm going to fly within about 90 feet so staying pretty high but yeah. any pockets where i see a bunch of these lizard guys or really i have six total casts of sleep and i i would like to drop <laughs> sleeps i would like to drop six sleeps tactically to give the dwarves the advantage okay and if the if anything tries to hit me i just flip it off because i'm immune or resistant, rather, but... Uh, okay. Yes, I so... Am... Yeah, I'm just going to... To a place. I am going to run up to 60 feet. So they're 60 feet away from me. Okay. Yeah, I'll get within about 80 feet and just shoot, start shooting my crossbow at him. I will shoot sacred flames. Okay. Um, cool. So, yeah, Taylor, go ahead and just... We're, we're kind of, you know, loosey-goosey on this. Just go ahead and roll all those uh, sleep casts. All right. Uh, two, three, four, and then I've got two more at higher level. <laughs> so, wherever okay. is needed. <clears throat> so, I blew all my spells. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. that at least knocked a couple creatures out. I knocked six of them out for sure, I feel like. Um, Let's see. You knock out. Because it starts Actually, with the lowest health. Yeah, you, you, you knock out... Um, well, let's see. If they're if they're in combat, so they've taken some damage. Yeah, probably. I yeah. would say you knock out five. Okay. Um, yeah, that seems about right. And I can fly for so, ten minutes. So. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Mid combat, just uh, these things start like falling asleep and like just tumbling off of their mounts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, anything that looks real close to dead too I want to drop some tolls on as I gotcha play. but mm -hmm. we can worry about that later yeah I mean in all like practicality the only things that would even be able to like attempt to hit you would be um, the the mounts and even even those only have like a range of out to 60 feet so yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, like I said, I'm. The bigger question is. Question is if one comes out to meet me or not. <laughs> if they're yeah, just so still said, locked in battle. So you said you're I'm about 60, 60 feet. feet out? Yeah, okay. Um, so I think at some point, yeah, one or two of these things are going to like turn uh, and face you. Probably like one of the, um, one of the fire newts and, and, a separate mount that kind of just comes running in in a sort of combination of like rage and panic, probably having lost its rider. Um, and it is going to try and use its uh fire burst on you. So, Sirene, give me a deck save. I am great at these. <laughs> okay I'll start shooting my crossbow at the ones that start coming out at us alright um <laughs> okay so uh Cyrony, as, as this uh this big mount comes running at you and spits just one of those explosive fireballs like at your feet uh you take 18 points of fire damage <laughs> I know. <laughs> I see that hit point total. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh at its face. 
you and your one hit point. <laughs> I look terrible, but I laugh in its face. Okay. Um, then I heal myself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so that happens, and then like you know, getting getting caught in the uh, the, the hail of uh, <laughs> practically flying dwarves as they just leap across the battlefield, a, a hand axe in each hand, uh, throwing and swinging their way through the enemy forces that are now softened up by uh, a surprise sort of flanking maneuver uh, on your part. I think, uh, while it's definitely a messy fight and you, you, you have most certainly seen a handful of dwarves just get like thrown off the edge and, and just hear the screams as they hit the lava. Um, eventually, you do um, route the remaining Fire Newt forces and they take off kind of perpendicular along the mountainside and along the lava ravine. Um, How many escape? Um, I will say I want to chase them down if I can. Okay. I I want nothing to live. <laughs> At least newt wise. Okay. Um. And yeah, I'm... I mean it's it's easy enough. You know, Lu Lucius knowing how relatively safe he is now that there's not a ceiling constraining how far he can be from these things. Um. Yeah, it's it's easy enough to keep pace with them and, and rain down a little bit of extra fire as you uh, just pick the riders off of the kind of straggling mounts that just continue running off into the jungle. Yeah, yeah. Anything sentient, like the mounts. The mounts weren't ever like really sentient. They were just kind of animals, right? Like, more or less. They I didn't mean, appear like, to have more like pets. Yeah, like they didn't yeah. appear to be smart enough that they could conceivably come back and or go and tell somebody that we're here yeah no they, they they don't seem like the revenge plotting type okay yeah so i'm just picking off the riders then okay i'm going to spare the dying anyone that i need to yeah. okay so uh yeah you make your way down to the uh well former battlefield finding uh maybe uh, two or three dwarves that have been downed, but not quite, um, not quite finished off. And uh, stabilize them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll land and help in any way I can. Cool. I guess I'll pro for the remaining time I'll probably run surveillance and just kind of circle around and keep an eye out for any more any patrols or anything coming. Okay. Um, yeah, so so with Lucius kind of keeping an eye out from above, um, you are all fairly confident that you're not about to be stumbled upon by any other uh, lingering elements of Fire Newts. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, Cyrene, as you're uh, helping stabilize some of the dwarves and all of that, uh, you see a familiar face in Sithi, come walking up to you and uh, she says uh, I thought you might have died in there. Oh, to me? Yeah. Um, words for wear, but no. <laughs> you look it. <laughs> Looking at your 1 HP self. <laughs> I healed myself. Oh, I sorry. have 16. You're, you're 16 out of a lot more than 16 HP self. But, uh, yeah, she, she says, uh, so these were coming after you then? Uh, yes. Hmm. How many uh, left inside? We... We are unsure. We killed all the ones that we saw. And then... He ran before this batch came up, and... So we're not sure. The ones that we heard, but... 
<laughs> there very well could be more. But that's that's <laughs> not a task for today. <laughs> she uh, tomorrow. smiles and says, uh, yes, of course. Um, at least a night's rest before we go back into Rakamar. But, um, yeah, quite, well, quite a number of them uh, are gone. Good. And she, she like, looks around at the, the fallen fire newts and uh, the striders that they rode, and um, <laughs> she says, well, if you fought anywhere near this number, Rakamar must be nearly empty, at least. Good. Good, good, good. All right. Well, tonight we rest. Tomorrow we finish the job. Yes? Um, I'll have to ask my party, but that's what I'm plan thinking. <laughs> I would like to fly in and land whenever I get done chasing them down. Okay. We'll, we'll see that's now. So, I'll just kind of fly in and just land next to Sirini like nothing happened. <laughs> and I'll say, did, did I hear something about uh, us uh, finishing this? Uh, well, yeah, not not today. Obviously. Oh, thank God! Um... And you see, Lucius <laughs> just like visibly relax. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks at Sirini and he goes, "You don't know how many, sp how little spells I have." Oh, I'm well. out. I, I I have none, so... <laughs> so, and I, I offer her um, a high five. Because <laughs> I don't either. Sirene definitely high fives. So, I'll say, oh, um, yes. it, these guys have made it personal now. They killed my fucking snake. Um, well... She says that, uh, at least theoretically, they should be running low on numbers now, so... Oh, good. Well, after a night rest, I'm gonna... Have a little fun, shall we say? And I'll say I'll look to uh, I, the dwarf, the dwarf, and I'll say, "Don't worry, tomorrow I'll clean house." And I'm just gonna <laughs> I'll toss her a wink, and I'm gonna just start walking away. Okay. Well, um, that's at least two votes. So, we we, you know, are a democracy in our party, but should finish the job get you back your home <laughs> <laughs> she uh, smiles and says oh, we thank you and please go get some rest we'll need it for tomorrow uh, absolutely okay, I go back to Fib okay <laughs> Fab snoozing. <laughs> this lasts eight hours? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she could ritualistically cast it again if she wanted. Like, now that we have the dome, we're safe. Until... Question mark? Yeah. On time I'm forever. Gonna... Oh, we should still... I mean, I'm assuming, how, how late in the day is it? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, like, realistically, it's probably, it's probably, like, early evening. Because I think you guys, you, you camped far enough away that it was, like, half a day's travel or so to get to Rockamar. And then you went in, promptly came back out. So we'll say after after the two uh, battles of the day, it's like it's early evening. Okay. Well, the late dinner of d stuff that doesn't need a fire, <laughs> and um, probably take an. Uh, okay. but I want to guard to see if any of them. Anything seems to be passing us during the night. I will say for a good chunk of the time, because it's an hour, but I'm ritualistically casting. So from the time I got back, I'm ritualistic, 
ritualistically casting a spell. So I am awake. I mean, we probably have like 12 hours, so... Right, I'm just saying, I, I'm awake for an hour, and once I get done, uh, I'll just, I can sit down and just say, well, I'm, I'm up for a bit. I've got some scribing to do, I've got all kinds of stuff to do, so... I can take first watch, and I'll kind of gesture towards Fib. That one never sleeps much. I'll wake her up quick. <laughs> well, Fib is already snoozing. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, and while we were out screwing around, she was. I mean, technically, she's just meditating, but. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, ten minutes for an elf is a, like twenty minutes for a human. So you're already way into your sleep, rest. Whatever. I mean, if you can convince Eric of that and get me a half hour short rest instead of an hour. <laughs> no, I'm saying you're, you're closer into it than... Because by the time I'm done with my spell, you should have had a short rest. Well, that's saying if she fell asleep immediately, like... Oh. Well, we came back and she's sleeping, <laughs> so... How long were you guys gone? Mm, probably, like... I would say, like, half hour to an hour. Probably after, like, ten minutes, she's like, eh, I'll just wait for them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Time I'm not sleeping, I will read Lucius's book. Yeah, I'm, I'm Which out. I should be, that, yeah. That's the most I've ran in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, you know about dwarves being natural-born sprinters and all that. Mm. <laughs> okay. So we um, be getting pretty close to the end of Lucius's book. Yeah, you probably are. Um, because yeah, you've you've put in a few nights of uh, of reading, and yeah, I mean, basically, have I? Do Do you have a copy of Volos to refer to? No. Okay. Well. You will. Yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> I can just ask you. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, you're you're definitely reaching kind of the last little bit of the book. Um, cool. Any other big stuff to address before trying to get that long rest in? Um. Well, I do want to say, like, when I'm casting this, if Sierney's paying attention at all to what I'm doing. Uh, it's not the normal, like, as is usual to recently, it's not the normal way I've done this before. Like, you guys have seen me resummon Stratos over and over again. This does not look at all like it. I'm throwing, like, pickled eyes and just some real crazy shit down. <laughs> I'm probably... Deep. I mean, I'm just saying that's just, you know, with the hour long spell that I'm doing, it's different. It's kind of creepy. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay. Cool. Um, so, yeah, Lucius finishes his spell, and nothing has apparently come of it. Um. Yeah. Anything else before crashing out? Just I get frustrated with it, that nothing showed up, and I'll just I'm just gonna literally like throw my books to the side and just kind of turn over in a huff and just fall asleep like that. <laughs> oh, you didn't wake Someone. Fib up. Well, I thought Sierney was up still. I, I would have woke Fib up. Oh. But. <laughs> Glee stated I was sleeping and not paying attention to you. Oh, I thought you were reading and not paying attention. Oh. Oh, well, yeah, in that case, I, I would have. I was going to read after a sleep. Gotcha. I would have woke Fib up then. What? what? It's your turn to take watch. I need to sleep so that I can get my thing back. And I'll mm, go and... Okay, did you get your creature? No. It didn't mm. work. What? Did, what? 
I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to bed. I'm exhausted. Okay, good night. Good night. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's an early night, relatively speaking. Um, somebody, at least, is awake to see uh, the sun kind of fully set over the mountains and um, keep watch over, well, really every shift. And there's actually not any... Um, unexpected traffic through here. No fire nude patrols. Um, nothing really at all. And so the night goes by uneventfully and you all get your long rest in. Hey, Although I will say yeah. Lucius, Lucius's sleep is probably a bit more fitful uh, than you guys are used to seeing. I mean, you all know, at least to some degree, that he's got some, uh, for lack of a better term, some issues that he's he's working through. But, yeah, he's especially um, kind of unsettled in the night. And... I yeah. put a centipede on him to try to calm him down. <laughs> <laughs> Did it it's work? Fine. I I don't know that I notice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I'm awake, I tell Fib not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you might not find centipedes comforting. What? Oh, I I don't I don't get it. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> she's like hovering no, with it. <laughs> The centipede just like kind of curling back on itself, <laughs> doing that like, "Where's the land?" thing. <laughs> Did you just compare the centipede to a snake? No, oh, I compared people's preferences. It's, it's not, it's nothing like a snake. It's. <laughs> Snakes are horrible. This is good. It's completely different. Whatever. I'll put it away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fib just, um, <laughs> at pouts, I guess, is a good descriptor <laughs> at Cyrony. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, so, so yeah. Everybody gets their sleep, and you wake up. Uh, relatively early the next morning, given how early you crashed out, and uh, yeah, the sun is rising over the valley. Ugh. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, it's a new day, so I'm gonna hit the new day button and see what kind of wonderful weather we're looking at. By oh, cool, way, it's rainy. By the way, Fib, you can make the inside of the dome as light or dark as you want. It's climate control. I yeah, it's always dark, but we have to leave it eventually. What? Well, I'm just saying, like, so that's extra bonus yeah. thing for your dome. Yeah. yeah so I, I think you hear like the, the gentle. Part. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, you you hear like the the gentle like you know patter of the rain across the top of the dome. Um. As yes, it is. A normal rainy day, not like some crazy tropical storm bullshit. Just uh, another another dark rainy day in Chult. And uh, yeah, so you wake up, and what is the plan? What is um, plan? <laughs> we bring the dwarves inside with us. Inside what? This dome? No, the cave. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well... Is Laura playing high or drunk tonight? Like, what is happening? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, no, to both. 
Well, I, I would say it actually this kind of opens up a question for me. Uh, I will wake up and I'm going to walk out of the dome if it's still up. Mm hmm. And just kind of look around. Do I notice anything or, you know, close my eyes, maybe try to concentrate? Feel anything? Um. I think you have this, like, unshakable feeling of being watched. Huh. I'm gonna act, just kind of act natural, act like I'm just out walking around looking and... Doing business. Yeah, just kind of, but kind of keeping my eye out. If I can't, you know what I mean? Like, I want to act natural, but I want to, I want to try to see if I can figure out what the fuck is watching me. Okay. So, I don't know what that would be. Um, well, I think it's, I think there's, there's two parts to it. So, performance check to act natural. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is working well. You, you look exactly like someone who's trying to act natural. <laughs> gotcha. I'm like, I'm like talking to myself. Just act natural. Act natural. <laughs> um, okay, make a perception check. All right. All right. Um, okay, so, so like looking around, taking stock of your surroundings. Um... I don't think you see anything. Nothing? Right. Mm -mm. I'm just going to sturdy my shoulders. I'm going to cast uh, Thaumaturgy on myself, and I'm going to say in a loud voice, Whoever you are, come out! <laughs> okay. So, I mean, um... I'm assuming everyone in the bubble knows something's up. Yeah, probably. And also, Lucius, when you do that, you just hear like this, uh, like screechy little voice from somewhere in a bush, just. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna like kind of chuckle to myself. A little, can I like? I guess I'm gonna walk over and examine this bush. <laughs> See if I can figure out what the fuck just mocked me. <laughs> Did it viciously mock me? <laughs> or like I? Didn't, I mean, it didn't. It didn't actually hurt, right? It was just... <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm going to go over and see what the heck this thing is. <laughs> okay. I um, walk out of the bubble and ask Lucius if he needs help. I'm going to look around. Uh, um, I'll go with. Uh, possibly? I don't know. Something was... I felt like something's watching me. And then I'm going to message to Sirene and I'll say... I think it's in this bush over here, but I don't know if it's harmful. <laughs> it sounds weak. <laughs> I will just ask if it's injured, because I, I can respond, right? Or can I not respond? Yeah, you can respond to it. Mm-hmm. So, I'll, uh, I'll reply, I'll, I'll message back and I'll say, yeah, maybe you should come down here in case it is. I go to join Lucius by the bush. I'll I'll wait about you know, f about five paces out from the bush. Okay. I'll follow behind Serenity. All right. So yeah, you head out. See Lucius there, looking <laughs> perplexedly, I suppose, at the bush. Uh. And um, yeah. So, uh, as they walk up, I'm gonna whisper to them, watch this. And I'm gonna get just, like, kind of general direction of the bush, I'm gonna say, step out with your hands up! <laughs> and I'm gonna give give both of them the, like, what, wait a minute finger, and just... <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you see... A quick flash of movement as a couple of like stubby green eye stalks just <laughs> out of the bush. Oh. And as soon as that happens, you see Lucius like his guard just drops. 
<clears throat> and I'm gonna, uh, I'll just say, oh wow, it worked. I'll say, I'll say you can come out. I mean, we're not gonna hurt you. A little bit of rustling in the, in the bushes. This thing kind of uh, hovers out, for lack of a better term. And so, floating there, uh, kind of just like looking at Lucius, uh, you guys see this thing. Oh my god! <laughs> and it's it's tiny. Like, it's a just yeah. like baseball size. It's just a yep. head? <laughs> it's like a little, little tiny... Uh... Little baby watcher. Yeah, basically. It's like an alien beholder. <laughs> kind of is. <laughs> um, I look at it, and I look at Lucius, and I look at it, and I'm like, uh, hi. Uh, I'm Cyrene. What's your name? It looks at you, and at Lucius, and at Thorf, and at the group, all at the same time. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm gonna and just it like turns its big eye towards Cyrene and just kind of winks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, Is it uh, it winks, not blinks, right? I well, mean, yeah, technically. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll say, um, well, this is. I'll be honest. This was a bit of an experiment. Um, I read about it in that book that you you've been reading. Cyrene and I, I never had the prowess to do it before but it's it seems like recently with some of our adventures I've been able to tap into some powers I didn't know I had so I'm assuming I know what this is so what is it <laughs> uh, yeah having read Volo's Guide to Monsters um, you would recognize this as a gazer which is basically, yeah, it's it's basically, um, well, if <laughs> if a beholder, yeah, yes, <laughs> um, but basically, most gazers come to be uh, because of dreams had by beholders. God. They just basically get dreamed into existence. And so they, they do carry a lot of uh, similar mannerisms to beholders. <laughs> Except, like Taylor said, this thing is really not much bigger than, like, a softball. <laughs> mm. And he looks adorable yet ferocious. <laughs> um, so I will mentally communicate with it, and I'm gonna ask. Uh, I appreciate you. Well, I'll say I appreciate you coming to my call. Uh, what may I call you? Hmm. That is a good question. Now, isn't it? I think it uh, kind of like seems to think on that for a second and it like it's like visibly cycling through names in its head as though you know theoretically looking at uh, lists of like 10 at a time and rejecting all of them uh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you might want to give him a minute. He's uh, he's still kind of getting used to, well, everything. <laughs> so is this the new Stratos, or um, is this an addition to Stratos? This is, well, he he's like the new Stratos, but he's better. And maybe 
I still do. I, I think my time limit has gone for my reply for his message. Probably, yeah. Uh... <laughs> um, I think it just replies back in its way. Uh, Sark. S A R Q for anybody trying to spell it. Alright. Uh, I'll say, uh, his name is Sark. His name sucks. Sark. That sucks. That looks Close creepy. Uh, uh, looks him be deceiving. He's quite charming. At least from what the, I read, they can. You be. don't know him. Well, I mean, I only know him as much as being mentally linked what? with him can be. But can you see out of all of his eyes like you could with Stratos? I'm going to grab Thor's shoulder as I try to look through his eye. <laughs> you can't look through Thor's eyes. No, as I try to look through my <laughs> my new familiar's eyes. Um, yeah, so it's it's kind of a uh, disorienting experience. <laughs> yeah, that's why I grab Thor's shoulder. I I probably yeah. lean really heavily on Thor <laughs> for a second. I'll yeah, drop him back it's, up. It's, it's like trying to interpret an extra dimension uh, of reality because you just you have like these independently moving eyes that are like simultaneously bombarding your mind with different bits of information that you're kind of able to piece together. Um, it's it's a little overwhelming at first, to be honest. Yeah, I, I would say like I'd probably do it for about. 15 seconds and then come out and probably vomit all over like <laughs> all over the grass and say oh i need to practice with that that's pleasant um if you're telepathically linked can he see through your eyes um i'll look at him and i will i guess i if he doesn't reply to me then i will telepathically ask him that he gives you a really like unsettling toothy grin. <laughs> <laughs> what's what? funny? What's funny is he, he gives me that grin, and then I will turn to Sirini and pretty much repeat that same grin. <laughs> oh, I love him. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> there it is. Just like what the fuck. <laughs> so, uh, I will say the cool thing about this guy though is I have communication and correspondence with him for I believe up to a mile so I just got a long range Stratos is he less squishy than before or he's uh, still really squishy probably just about as squishy but so he's just gonna die too I mean, oh, that's no. familiar. Uh, he's a bit less squishy. Oh, is he? I mean, I'm squishier than Stratos was, so that gives you any Mark indication. Armor <laughs> class 13, hit points 13. Oh, okay, have... so yeah, he's not too bad. How are you squishier than Stratos? I only have an AC of 12. <laughs> okay, I feel like most of the time when people say that, they mean their hit points, not their AC. Oh. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I'll I say, well, just, would you, um, that would, just... you, would you guys be opposed if I sent this little guy in ahead of us to do um, some scouting? No. Why would any of us care about that? I give it a, I give her a dirty look and so does it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll say, well, I mean, I just figured, worst case, he'll go in and annoy the piss out of them. <clears throat> and I can't, I'll throw a wink to, to see my familiar. <laughs> he gives you that same creepy smile. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so. I'll uh, I'll look to to my familiar and I'll just give him a nod. 
and telepathically I'll say, go ahead and have some fun. And he, okay. I would say, you know, I would tell him telepathically where the mine is and how to get yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine, yeah. So, uh, okay. And then I'll just go Be back you. to helping pack up camp. I was wondering if you were going to watch or not. Uh, I'll pack up camp and then uh, I'll, I'll look, like I said, I can see, I can do all this telepathically for a mile. So I'll just have mm -hmm. him let me know when he gets in there. And if he finds anything important, I'll tell him to, you know, notify me and I'll, I'll take a look. But it's disorienting, mm -hmm. to say the least. <laughs> um, and actually, I, I believe most of Lucius's time is trying to explain to Cyrene what it's like to see through six eyes at once or five eyes at once. That's fair. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's probably... I don't know, thinking about it, we'll say, like, we'll say five minutes, because he's not, like, hauling ass to get anywhere. Um, yeah. So it's, like, five minutes, and you you get kind of, like, a, a telepathic nudge that's, like, okay, I'm in. Um, so, specifically, is there, like, is there one area that you want him to head towards? Uh, I, wanna, I want him to kind of repeat our path the best he can trying to avoid anybody seeing him uh and i'm trying to scout out for if they're guarding that anymore or if anybody's even touched the bodies i just kind of want to check out what's been done okay um yeah so you send them through and i think you you know you see the the mine track or mine cart track that you know, you guys use to cross the lava. Um, and then emerging from that tunnel, you see that there are still a bunch of uh, bodies piled up. And <laughs> you see that the uh, the bodies of the, the big scaly strider things are still, like, blocking one of the tunnels. Uh, the one that Groilmod had went and uh, kind of explored uh, during your visit here yesterday. Uh, there is what looks like kind of a a skeleton crew of uh, fire newts working the uh, the facility again. I mean, there's like maybe like two of them in the foundry, um, and then you hear what sounds like a solitary uh, hammer clanging against an anvil. Um, so definitely. Um, there's still something it's, it's, there. There are still some here, yes, but it's markedly less occupied than uh, last time you were in here. All right. Well, I'm going to. I'll I'll tell him to to. Uh, just, you know, start working his way back because I have an idea. Um, and at the same time, I will relay the information. That okay. there's a couple of them left but they haven't tended to the bodies. They haven't really done anything. They're just trying to keep things going. So, looks promising. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Are we, like, committing low-key genocide by wiping these things out? Not really, because they came in and invaded... And it, it just seems wild to literally just murder all of them. Yeah, it's just retaliatory <laughs> things. <laughs> I mean, this is probably not the entire fire lizard community either. That's why I said low key. We're just no, it's just like kind of, it's genocide. like it's like, like mini genocide. No, but it's like <laughs> it's like it's like theoretically, theoretically, if. I don't know, some nation were to just round up all the people that, uh, I don't know, believed in, like, Judaism or something. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> I, I, think, I think this is more like if, you know, when England believed in imperialism and went out and took over a country and the country got kicked out and then they went and revolted. 
I mean, I don't and know. threw England back out. <laughs> I feel like killed you guys are all way, of England. You guys are being way too no. uh, high scale. There's more fire lizards. Like they came from somewhere. They're not killing all of England. They're just no, killing the part of England that. I, I don't know. I feel like <laughs> the dwarves have been calling for the SWAT team to come in for a long fucking time, and we just swatted these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Did we swat them or did we get swat? I mean, the question. We hurt we're dead them, and we're we, alive. Yeah, we hurt them far more than they hurt us. So That's fair. By the way, this is the conversation as we're walking to the... If you guys are door. fine with it, that's fine. Uh, this is just what I've been thinking about and kind of wishing Fib would be the kind of character who would care about that. It's, <laughs> it's not genocide because they've only, they've only been here a hundred years or so. They it's ran more, the dwarves out. Yeah. So if anything, it's we're more like uh, Scotland and England's relationship throughout history. England tries to invade. Scotland tries to kick them out. <laughs> Murder. I mean, that's how it's their land to begin with. Like it's okay. a war. All right. All right. Wars do. All right. Okay. Anyway, let's go. Let's go murder some fire nudes. Indiscriminately. Yeah, I'll <laughs> you walk into Rockamar and there's a baby fire nude. What do you do? Oh, oh, oh I stopped that shit. <laughs> I just didn't think I'd be the one worried about that. <laughs> yeah, you don't even have to worry yeah. about that. Lucius would just walk in and stomp that thing. <laughs> oh, At least throw back into the lava. Like Usually... No, nah, because they heal in the lava. That, yeah, that wouldn't be a murder, which is what we're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> we love murder. Come on, guys, get it together. We're trying to murder them, <laughs> not give them a bath. <laughs> no, <what the> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this is like a multiple choice video game. Murder, give bath. <laughs> <laughs> Think of all the young dwarves that were displaced. The younglings. The younglings. <laughs> <laughs> all those beardless dwarves. Oh, man. If they're beardless dwarves, they deserve to die. Oh, what? Wow. Are dwarves, <laughs> dwarves born should have beards? beards. I, mean, I like to think are. dwarves are born with beards. I think dwarves are born with beards. Hang on, I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> <laughs> We've we've reached peak D and D. We have. <laughs> For anybody <laughs> keeping track, are, are dwarves born with beards? This is a very important question. I feel like the males are probably born with at least stubble. Um, I don't know what this is, but I do want to share it. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> the best intro. <laughs> what? <laughs> Like a clip on his nose, so like, did I think it's so he doesn't smell anything? Yeah, oh. but like, what smells so bad? He's did changing he poop a baby's in diaper. His diaper. He is a baby. No, he's he changing has a diaper a baby. on. He has a diaper <laughs> on. Oh, maybe. <laughs> well, for anybody wondering, that's what we're looking at. But it's like a gnome with. Chest hair. Dude, wait, that's yeah, silly. it's like an old cherub. Yeah. A very, very old cherub, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, an anyway. Answer. Yep. What is your answer? The world may never know. Yep. No, no man or elf has ever beardless dwarf. Unless he were shaven in mockery and would like to die of shame. <laughs> they have beards from the beginning of their lives, male and female alike. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like that. I do too. That is, of course, in Lord of the Rings. I don't know how it is in D&D. Oh, yeah, and also Rip Copper. Uh, Taylor Copper. knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Which, what? 
Um, remember Halleth and his first buddy? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I was thinking about that. I just couldn't remember his name. Yeah. Just, just Dungeon of the Mad Mage stuff. Yep. 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 I didn't see that. <laughs> anyway. Yep. Um. Yeah. So, genocide? Genocide. <laughs> genocide. Yeah. It's not genocide. I mean, miniature genocide. We can make it genocide. <laughs> okay, I have another thing to share. Oh, boy. <laughs> let's let's <laughs> take some fire nades first. Okay, I just disagree with the caption on this image as well. Dad? What? <laughs> Did someone just say dad? <laughs> Okay, let's do, go do genocide. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we love uh, genocide. So, so a mere five minutes, and you have descended once again into the depths of Frockamar, and you emerge in the uh, the mining caverns once again, uh, the kind of the front entry area on the map that we used last time. Um, straight ahead, there's the bridge over the river of lava, extending to your left and right. Uh, there are more kind of chambers, caverns that, uh, go off in, in directions that, uh, you're not entirely sure of. Uh, what do you do? Um, so I'm going to just pick one and I'll, I'll let, uh, I'll let my buddy, my little buddy go off down that way. Okay, so to the right, the path is extremely smoky. Uh, it's like obscured. The smoke in there is so thick. Um, to that... the left, oh. seems open and um, un... Un unconcealed, I guess. Like it's it's visible there. Does the right um, seem like it's going to like the the smeltery and stuff, like all the? Um. I so like you guys had gotten a rough idea of how the place is laid out before, and you had gotten the impression that all of the I guess like facilities of the forge and foundry and and all of that stuff uh, are located over the bridge. Okay. So, according to all records that you guys have, um, anything this side of the bridge should just be like mining tunnels. Okay. So I was... those mounts. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, you're good. Go ahead. Those mounts spit fire. Yes. Yes. Um, I'll yeah. send them down one of the open tunnels then, just to kind of get an idea of the of what it links to and just kind of scout around okay um so yeah if if you send him down the more clear tunnel uh he has uh, a whole like path of minecart track to follow and it kind of winds and you can see that there are several uh branching paths but most of them terminate within probably 10 to 15 feet um there is another um kind of northern leading passage that you can see um emerges to some sort of overlook over the uh the lava once again and then eventually the minecart track kind of uh turns relatively sharply to the left and around a corner probably uh call it like a hundred ish feet down the line um, do, in what I was told, do I know if this leads anywhere in particular, or if it's just, like, another, out to another mining tunnel that I would think of? So, uh, this tracks pretty well with the general area that, uh, you think there'd be, like, an exit to Wormheart Mine. Um, um and you can also see, kind of flickering against the wall, um light that suggests there's maybe another path that eventually leads back up to the uh, 
the river of lava through that direction as well. Uh, I'm going to send him along the path that leads up to the liver, river of lava. So I'm going to essentially have him kind of loop around the whole thing through as many tunnels as he can. Okay. And just um, basically clear the tunnels. Make sure that there's nothing creeping around. Gotcha. So you send him like down the track and he kind of like looks down all the tunnels and then kind of loops around um, up to... Uh, sort of a straightaway that crosses over the lava once again. Um, but before it crosses, there are a couple of little caverns off to the left uh, where he can see... Um, like they're, They are dark, but illuminated just enough by the, the kind of dull glow of the lava that he can see uh, what looks like a couple of... Uh, bound and beaten dwarves kind of slumped against the walls in both of these chambers oh uh so i'll i guess i will uh pop out of my watching it all that craziness happened and i'll say well down here and i'll point down the path there's a couple dwarves tied up and do they look like they're near death, or are they just prisoners? Um, so, uh, if you, you know, send uh, Sarkin to really, like, get a closer look, you see um, they're tied up, gagged, uh, burned over much of their bodies. Um, still alive. Uh, although one of them is, um, like, visibly, even from across the room, you can tell he's, like, shuddering, um, almost, like, twitching a little bit. All right, uh, I will, I'm gonna grab Sirini and I'm gonna say, we need to go help them. They're, they're, they're gonna die. Uh, and I'll, I'll lead her, uh, I'll lead her along quietly. Way. Huh? The way. Okay, yes, so I will. All right, so you continue along the path, eventually getting to the kind of makeshift cells that these prisoners are kept in. Uh, the first one on your left is uh, the one where this one is kind of like propped up against the wall and just kind of convulsing. Um, you can see like the rapid movement of his chest. He's kind of like hyperventilating. Um, doesn't really seem entirely aware of his surroundings. Um, I guess uh, I'll I'll look at Tyranny. I'll say, well, is is there anything? I guess I'll I'll look at the cell. Are they locked? Or oh, sorry. No. They're... How many are there? Uh, two cells, one dwarf in each cell. And really, they're they're not like the most secure things. Like there aren't even doors on them. They're the the prisoners are just bound there, and honestly, don't look to be in any shape to like even attempt to stand and leave of their own uh, volition or power. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I guess I, I'll go try to free any of the ones that don't look like they're on death's door. Okay. Um, I mean, both of them oh, have two. been severely beaten and burned. Right. I am so going the, to cure wounds, both of them. Oh, there you go. Then we're good. There's two, and they're both hurt, so... Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, okay. So, ten, and... Of course, she healed oh, wow. really well. <laughs> <laughs> They okay. are so so yeah, better. a lot of the a lot of the burns and um, looking at it, very very precise uh, like cuts and 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 other um, like intentionally painful looking markings that are on these dwarves. A lot of them uh, kind of fade to an extent, and uh, especially one of them, uh, the the second as you're kind of progressing through there, um, seems to really, um, he kind of like levels out, 
Uh, although he is still like really weak uh, to the point that he can't really even stand up. Um, just so you know, like what we're dealing with here, like in game terms, uh, this guy has like five levels of exhaustion. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yeah. God. He, he, yeah. Seven, I think it is, isn't it? Or is it six? Isn't it six? I it's, thought it was six. I believe it is six, yeah. Mm. So <sighs> practically comatose. Um, Are both of them like that or just one? Uh, so the one... One at four he's... and one at five? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, one... They're, I would say they're both at five, like, if we're talking game numbers here, because, like, one of them, as, like, you heal him and you see the, the scarring and burns kind of uh, go away, and, and he, like, sleeps or, or rests um, more peacefully. The other one, though, um, his he's, like wide awake but clearly not able to uh relax or rest and you just see like his eyes kind of dart around as he notices that someone is coming yeah no he's um, he's he's out like a fucking light i put him to sleep okay you're you're kind of cutting out there uh, sorry i said uh i said he's out like a light i cast sleep on him hmm. okay uh yeah he's he's definitely asleep <laughs> Okay. Um, and if Sirini so. looks at me at all for sleeping him, I'll just say, hey, I think he could be better off resting while he's sleeping. Well, that's, that's okay. So. Um, I guess what we should do... Um, I would have probably... Are we... We were bringing the dwarves in with us, right? Um, I believe that seemed like the plan. So I'm, I'm, I would have grabbed uh, the leader of the dwarves and brought them yeah, Sithy. Okay. So I, I'll look to Sithy and I'll say, can you hand? Can you guys handle getting them to safety? She, uh, she just nods. And says, of course. Okay. So that'll. We'll, I'll let, we can leave you guys to this, and we can continue clearing. All right. Um, so up ahead, there's there's this like second bridge over the uh, the lava river, and I think again by the by the dull light that kind of bounces its way down the uh, hallway opposite you, you can see the uh, the limp body of one of these mounts and kind of putting it together, doing some of that, like, you know, kind of general sense of direction geometry that, that everyone can do to some extent, I feel like, um, you gather that this is kind of, this is like where the tunnel that Groil mod took would have led him. Okay. So it's like where he got, uh, kind of cut off by this, this, mob of the uh the giant striders that came and and <laughs> nearly ended him uh i wanna i will just kind of take a look around in the animal like area because this was right next to it right uh yeah so so basically you're coming up uh alongside the foundry which is where you had the the big fight while you're in here last time um and you said there were a couple things here, so I would have warned everybody to, mm -hmm. you know, stay quiet. I just want to kind of look, just visually look in. Do I see any, like, dwarf bones among where the, the creatures were sleeping? Um, yeah, you would probably see a few. Okay, so I could gather that these guys were probably left for food for the birds. Entirely possible. Okay. So, good to know. Um, so, uh, I guess I will uh, defer to Sirni since my last plan didn't work too well. <clears throat> I'll look to Sirni and I'll say, well, what do you think we should do? Well, 
If we only found a couple, we could either try to draw them out. Um, but I think... Holy shit! What? What? <laughs> the painting just fell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. So wait, what? What? Which painting? The actual uh, painting, or your? Yeah, the like, actual painting. Oh, just I just like hear a whoosh and a clop. Yeah. Cool. Anyways, um. <laughs> so um, there's only a few left. I think we can just. If you only saw a few, then we can just go ahead. Okay. Not sure if we really need a plan. Alright. <laughs> so, I guess, uh... I'm gonna... I'll have my gazer come around and try to come in through the other side. So, like, where we originally... Where, like, Cyrene and Thorv and everybody fought. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I want to have him just go over to... By one of the, like, bodies around the corner and just start being annoying. <laughs> you know? Just try to distract them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, you send them in there, and uh, you can see probably, like, one on either side of the room. So one fire newt with its its back basically to uh, Sark as he kind of drifts his way over um, into this, like, entryway of the foundry. And then another one uh, that's kind of back by the door where you saw the reinforcements come running in um, <clears throat> as you guys made your last escape. Uh and so yeah, you, you send a little little gazer in, and um, and I will I will share their plan with the rest of the group so that everybody's ready. Okay. So, and I'll just say the lack of a plan. Well, plan. what I'm doing at least, I'll just say you I'm gonna. Plan? I'm sending him over to try to annoying. Yeah, to try to draw their attention, and then we can hit him from the side. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I'm aiming, um, and I'll, I'll tell them I'm gonna aim for the guy towards the back so he doesn't run back and get any reinforcements. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I think I'm gonna do for this little situation is I'm gonna like roll some initiative with tokens and whatnot. Um, but I don't think we need to go full battle map because you guys, you have these things outnumbered by like you know, factor of like three or four. So it's really just a question of whether the alert gets, uh, or whether the alarm gets raised. Yeah. I want to nuke the one in the back, uh, with a, if I can do this at a higher level, I can, uh, I would like to do a witch bolt at third level. So, uh, okay. Oh, right. Is this is this the campaign where my macro is still fucked up? I, I think believe it is. so. It is. Uh, okay. Um, well, in that case, I'll bring you guys back over to the Rockamar map. And we can do it the old-fashioned way. Go ahead and roll some initiative. Should we move back to where we, or over to where we? Um, you don't really need to move because, like, like I said, it's it's going to be a pretty quick encounter. Okay. So it's really just about getting initiative kind of on a tracker, so that way we can figure out if anybody gets a way to warn others. Oh shit! I can't change mine because every time somebody adds theirs to it. There we go. It kept kicking me out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm just waiting for Gazer to show up here. 
sure would be cool if it would do the thing. That would be great, roll 20. Nah. I think I'm gonna have to reload. Give me a sec. It's okay, guys. We're just killing two tongues. That's all. <laughs> Okay, so a gazer. Do, 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 do. I believe if you can't load in on a fresh reload of roll twenty, you'll never load in. So get it done. <laughs> Okay, I have a character sheet. That's progress. I believe I can fly. I was very surprised that no one said that immediately. I was too. You know what? I'm just I, I got its stats at least because the character sheet popped up. Wait. All right. Hey, it's alive. Okay. Cool. Um that and that should take care of everybody I think just sort it up and okay so we'll say the kind of inciting incident here is like the 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 gazer that comes in and uh <laughs> just like 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 a bumblebee that kind of like weird zigzaggy erratic flying just does that like right around the face of one of the uh fire newts and then kind of like swoops out of the way and with a 20 fire newts are going to get to go first so um the one that it was just messing with is going to like turn around and try swat at it Not really, like, having the presence of mind to suddenly just fire blast it. Uh, swings once and hits the gazer, kind of, like, batting it around. But still alive. And the other one uh, hasn't really seen anything yet because it's across the room. So it's just going to, like, kind of come and see what the hell's going on. Which actually puts him right in the line of fire from a, a side attack. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, speaking of side attacks, and this guy who Lucius had specifically called out wanting to target. Yep. Uh, Lucius, it's your turn. What do you want to do? Well, I, do, I already rolled. Right. Let me scroll up. It was, it was a tw 21. <laughs> <laughs> ah, um, and I dealt yeah. twenty-two damage. Uh huh. That's that's exactly enough to just one-shot this thing. All right. So yeah, I drop him with just a fucking giant lightning bolt. <laughs> um, and uh, for flavor, you you see uh, Sark just kind of start crackling with electrical energy. I can't do anything this turn, but he's building up the static and getting ready for a, sh a shocking grasp. <laughs> Okay, um, and I'm also going to have him fly the fuck away. Like he's just he got hit a he got hit, so he's flying out of dodge now. Yep, sounds good. And he'll fly back All in right. when he when it's time. All right, uh, Fib, if you have like a side angle here, which you'd be able to hit the one uh, fire newt that's still standing. What would you like to do? I'm gonna do a dissonant whisper on it. Uh, it's a fifteen DC. Fifteen. How wise is this tongue? I think it's not wise. It is in unwise. That is 17 wise. Okay, well, it still takes half damage. Okay. <sighs> so, six points of psychic damage. And why not give some inspiration? Here you go. To the tongue. Gets it. What? Gets it? Uh, Thor, 
It's going right after me, so. Ah. Okay. I didn't hear you say that, so I thought you were giving inspiration to You're the tongue. Thor, <laughs> here you go, tongue. Get them good. Give them good licks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, Thor, you can run up on this thing if you want. Okay. Let him burst. I'll run in and hit him with Bob. Go, Bob. Or try go. to. Oof. Okay. Yeah, a couple of misses from Bob. Um, although you do have inspiration, if you know theoretically, you really want to like do a thing. Oh, D6 or D4, what is it? It's D8, D8 now, I think. D8. It's a D8 because I'm so powerful. Hey. I used to yeah. on the second one. That's fine. After my first yeah. miss, I'll focus more. <laughs> uh, yeah, so 20 definitely hits. Takes 9 points of slashing damage. Uh, yeah, the, the Fire Newt is looking pretty beat up, but still standing. Uh, so then Azaka gets to come and probably steal the kill. Unless Thor wants to like burn through more resources or something. No, not for this. Okay. Uh, so Azaka is going to shoot it twice. Pew pew. Okay, she hits once. Which is enough to kill it. And so, yeah. Uh, quickly, relatively quietly, you clear the foundry. And so, this room is kind of still. There's still like the bubbling of uh, molten metal in a big like trough in the center of the room. Um, but other than that, the room is quiet and empty, and you can still hear a singular uh, hammer kind of clanging against an anvil somewhere deeper in the facility. Uh, I believe Sark is going to head off that direction. I okay. hate that it's not Stratos. <laughs> I mean, you would hate that. I love Stratos. I That's mean, you could call him Stratos. I'll be called Stratos. He may not like it. Sounds but... good. Can you ask if he'd like it? I mean, he told, told me his name was Sark. Yeah, but like, you know, people have nicknames. But... It's fine, you can ask him later. Yeah, we'll ask him later. <laughs> As he's going down the tunnel, I'm watching through his eyes, trying to orient myself to this. Like, kind of get used to the seeing through multiple eyes. Okay. Um, yeah, so you send them through, and uh, you eventually reach a door. And, like, looking around, you know, there's the, like, okay, how am I going to get around this? And then you see the, the crane that, uh, like, hangs over this big trough of molten metal. Uh, there's, like, an, kind of like a window, just this, this gap in the wall uh, to accommodate the swinging of this crane that actually looks to be... Um, it, like its base is in an adjoining room. Okay. Um, and yeah, so if 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 you send your gazer over that way, uh, you look through and you do see a solitary fire newt, uh, banging away, shaping uh, some piece of metal on a large anvil. All right. And um, yeah, I think also from that vantage point, you can hear. Uh, some other like clanging and and rattling of uh, sounds like some sort of like large ratcheted device with like chains affixed to it. Um, yeah, sounds like there's something else still alive and at work within uh, within Rockamar, but all right, but only yeah. only one visible and one something else yeah okay so i will bring him back and i will say there's a door down there Did, was it a iron door or a stone door or um it would have been a stone door 
Stone door. All right. So I'll say, well, yeah. there's a stone door down there. Um, I, I can't really couldn't really check to see if it was locked or anything, but there's <laughs> one newt working what? on what? Yeah, oh. Becca, you're you having issues? No, Laura says we have a ghost. Oh. Because of the painting. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so as you're, like, planning this stuff out, um, one of the, uh, one of the other dwarves, not Sithy, because she stayed behind and is, uh, like, helping sort out the, the hostage retrieval situation, um, walks up to you and says, if things are clear up to this point might I suggest some of our forces flank from the other side of the facility we can clear the lava pools with no issue and we can converge on the lizards finish them yeah I'm I'm 100% okay if, if you guys have got a plan I'm cool with that uh, how do you do you know how to get that door open or do you know if it has a lock on it that's down there? And I'll gesture towards down towards where the banging <laughs> is coming from. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think he knows for sure, but uh, I mean, th this is the door that you you saw the reinforcements come out of. So... Oh, okay, so it's probably not locked. Then. Yeah, it's, like generally speaking, these seem like pretty standard doors, and. I think from what you've observed of fire nukes, they don't necessarily seem the, the trap setting type. Okay, so that's good. All right, well, yeah, then yes, I'll I will say uh, if you want to do that, uh, and I'm actually I'll say uh, here, and I'll <laughs> I'm gonna essentially like hand him Sark as he as Sark flies up. I'm gonna just kind of grab him out of the air and set it in in his hand <laughs> i'll say and i'll say well don't worry about that and sark will just kind of lift off of his hand and i'll say sark just uh follow him follow them make sure that they're they make it to where they're going safely for me. <laughs> okay so so they disappear kind of back across the bridge and uh anytime you like tune in with sark or whatever you um you see them kind of like recovering some of the ground that uh you had already cleared and then uh eventually like going to Let's see so yeah they they go down um to what would have been like the first bridge that you guys crossed in your last visit here and <laughs> you see through sark's eyes as um maybe like five or six of these uh, dwarven warriors, uh, they, like, take a moment, and you see them, it looks like they cast something on themselves, and then they proceed to just, like, Master Chief Halo jump their way straight over the Lava River to uh, a large terrace that um, looks like it's basically... Uh, on the opposite side of a large chunk of the facility. So actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna move you guys kind of back to the foundry now. Okay. In a general sense, um, we don't have to worry too much about like specific placement or. I have a feeling like... that as he, as they're going over and as he flies over, he's kind of like mocking them. Yeah, probably. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just like he goes and acts like he's getting a running start and then just kind of jumps and <laughs> flies across and then just kind of turns and looks at them and blinks a couple times once he gets across. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, you know, you guys are really like here. Um, you get the impression that the dwarves are probably like somewhere right around where my pointer is kind of like ending here so okay. they're coming into whatever this area is uh with a pincer attack in mind gotcha and 
that yeah like that is the door we're gonna go through right yeah okay so i guess i'm gonna ah leg i'm gonna just take a position like here okay so cool and i'm assuming somebody else will probably want to go in first because i don't really do much face up so basically, who wants to breach the door, I think, is the question. I can do that. Okay. Um, anybody else have any, like, specific tactical stuff they want to get out there before we move on to the next room? Nope. Yeah, I think I'm good. Uh, perfect there. Okay. I'll pull out the wand, just in case. So I'll have it. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah. Then opening this door. Oh, yeah. I will say to, like, I was going to say I will message to the other guys that were starting to breach. Okay, cool. So, and it, it as long as I know roughly where they are, and there's an a, an avenue for it to go. It it can get through. Mhm. Mm so. Yeah. No, I think I think you're good. Cool. Um. Yeah. So so Thor opens the door, and inside, uh, you see, a series of tables and weapon racks, armor racks. Uh, you seem to have stumbled across, the armory, of the dwarves that lived here some hundred plus years ago. I mean, the swords look nicer than mine. <laughs> well, I mean, you Always got looking for that upgrade. Um, You're getting rid of see... Bob already? Yeah, ditching Bob. Poor Bob. I mean, Bob's <laughs> been really dropping the ball. What? What's Bob? Like, he's the battle axe. He's a battle axe. Oh, pfft. I can Jeez, carry more I... than one sword. Ooh, dual wielding. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so... Basically, what you see in here is uh, a bunch of pretty standard battle axes, great axes, mauls, morning stars, war picks, war hammers, and heavy crossbows. Um, plus a bunch of crossbow bolts and four suits of dwarven half plate armor. Okay. No particularly shiny weapon. Not especially, no. Okay. Alright. Um, so... On to the next door. Yeah, I've got my hand on his shoulder. I'm literally doing SWAT team breach and charge. So. <laughs> okay. Excellent. So, um, from there, moving on to the next door. Uh... And then once we get to this door, I'm going to message again to them, and I'll say, I think this is the final door. Okay. I mean, because um, I've, I've seen in, and this is where the guy was that I saw, right? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so opening this door. Um, you know, I'm actually uh, gonna... Do we get a message back from them? Like, any, um, any affirmation at all? Yeah, so I, I think as you send that message, um, you get a message back that says uh, they found some some more of these things and they're fighting. Uh, um, okay. I'm going to pop through Stratos' eyes, and I'm going to grab Thor's shoulder and, like, kind of pull him back for a second. Yeah, so so you see through the, the little, little beholder eye, like, staring down a hallway... And there is, uh, there's an open door that it looks like a couple of the dwarves are trying to uh, kind of like hold as a couple of these uh, these fire newts are trying to fight their way out of it. And then uh, behind one of the dwarves, another door opens. And uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out exactly what you'd be able to see from this vantage point. Um, you see the door open, 
and um, a quick succession of fiery blasts just psh, 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 like blast out of the door and uh, down one of the dwarves. All right. Uh, I'm going to snap out of it and I'm going to say we got to go now. And I'll let go of Thor. <laughs> okay. I'll say they're in trouble. Yeah. I'll smash the door down. Smash the door it. down. Yeah, give me. Well, sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can open it. It's not like locked. <laughs> I like well, that you didn't even try to open it. <laughs> yeah. No. Just destroy. Um, okay. So inside, there is a fire newt that is like it's paused. Its back is to you, but it's kind of like looking at the the opposite door <laughs> away from you guys. Like, what's all that noise? So what do you do? It thinks we're coming in from the other end. Run in and kill him? Yeah, I'm, uh, I will follow Thorv in. Uh, and I'm actually going to just run in behind Thorv and just fucking shockingly grasp and punch this thing in the side of the head. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so Thorv runs in and hits it twice what? before it even like knows he's coming. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Man, all 20 is getting low. I'll try and like zoom in, maybe. That'll help. I don't know. I'm desperate for something because I'm getting like one FPS on roll 20 right now. <laughs> um, okay. That is not good. It, it is not. Um, all right. The Thorv comes in and just clobbers the thing and like cuts into it twice with the axe. Uh, it is, like, hobbled, but not dead. Uh, Lucius comes in, and the thing has time to turn and kind of react and uh, is able to duck out of the way. Uh, let's do a quick initiative roll-off thing. Right. Just to see how stuff goes. So everybody who's oh. running into the room... <laughs> Oh, hey. Hi there. Yeah. <laughs> Grandma and I are oh, really shit. <laughs> okay, so Grandma, uh, yeah, what are you doing? Laura, I'm use Hunter's Mark on it, and then I'm going to yeah. shoot it with my long. Beep, beep, beep. I see. Okay. Oh, Jesus, Grandma. Well, damn. <laughs> um, <laughs> he is ready. And, and it's dead. <laughs> okay. Uh, we can we can keep this initiative though because we're gonna be drifting into some other stuff Let very me shortly. Mine then. I get two more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that how that works? Just adjust it to more. No, I I get. For I want a higher. Yes. yes, it is. I want a higher initiative then. I'll just well, change no. It. The thing is, is I can <laughs> instead of using my dex, I can use my intelligence, and it's a plus two more. So. Indeed. Why don't you just tell it? Uh, just because it's easier to just roll you... initiative and bump it up. I mean, can't you tell it to roll initiative off your wisdom? Uh, no, it's off his intelligence. He's not wise at all. Off your intelligence, sorry. Maybe? I don't know. I'll have to play around with that. I thought you could. You probably so anyway. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, moving on. There are two doors in this room, one that leads uh, out of it to the south, one that leads out of it to the east. Uh, Which was, do you use? He was looking I'll to the go south. straight across. Yeah. I'm going to get ready to breach and charge with him. Okay. Um, I would like to pop back to, Stra uh, to Sark real quick and just see what see how it's going. Okay. Um, so, we've got a roll initiative for one more, I guess, class of enemy here. Uh -oh. um, that thing. Okay. Um, cool. So, yeah, you see, you. you pop back into his uh, field of view and you see uh, a couple of like collapsed smoldering dwarves uh, as 
the remainder of seem to be uh, kind of like backing up a little bit to force some sort of bottleneck. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Um, so I'll relay that okay. information that they're they're trying to bottleneck them. So we probably should too. Things are there. Um, like enemies? Yeah. I think Sark would be able to see uh, from this vantage point probably at least three or four. Okay. Um, and one of them, probably worth pointing out, is uh, wielding some kind of like metallic staff and like pointing it down the hallway at the, uh, the dwarves and just firing off these... Uh, these blasts of, of like scorching energy um yeah so that's the thing um and then are there any that um look like they're advancing like trying to cheat trying to like get a break away from the rest of the newts um break away like Not i mean really. are, like are they actually spilling out now or are they just kind of holding where they are so so yeah it's it's kind of like a condensed uh hallway fight situation so there's like a couple that are kind of trying to force their way through and uh and like engage with the dwarves in melee and then you've got like a caster kind of firing <laughs> over their shoulder gotcha. um and it looks like there's even more that like are waiting to to have space to come running out and join the okay um cool okay. yeah our eric i have a mechanics question for you yes oh i have this spell right no you don't wrong as <laughs> that um Exposed flames in the area are doused. Things like their flame attacks are doused, like their spit. Um. Hmm. I mean, I. Okay, let me let me check one thing because, like, if it's just mundane fire, if it's not like. Technically, a spell effect or whatever. I'd be kind of okay with that. They just um, spit and it turns to a fucking fiery ice ball and shatters. Well, more just like it kind of fizzles and... Oh, I know. I'm just saying yeah. that'd be kind of cool that it's just... <laughs> so much that it just... But yeah, like, um... I... I th think... Yeah, I'd be okay with it. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, so, you guys pushing forward, breaching the next room, um, you see that it is empty, and the opposite door, or at least the, the door on the uh, eastern wall, is kind of hanging open, and you can hear uh, sounds of combat from the other side. Not keep heading that way. Is there anything yeah. in this room? Yep, same here. Uh, so, in this room, you see. Um, Are we still kind of, of like, out of initiative for moving? Well, f yeah, for now. Like, basically, once once you guys kind of get settled, pick up initiative. Okay, yeah. I um, just want to move into this room with Thor. Yeah. Uh, so, so, basically, this is. A, a second room of like the forge so you've got um some like still molten uh bars and rods of metal that are kind of like sitting uh some of them uh being like shaped or, or cast um there are some like finished uh blocks and bars sitting in uh, in one that quick glance looks like iron and maybe a little bit of adamantine um 
That's really about it. I mean, just some kind of like general equipment spread out around the place. Um, but yeah. So everybody, like, run in as far as you will, and then we're gonna pick up some uh, some initiative stuff. Is this a location? Is Should this I move a my location? token there? Uh, I'll move you. Thank you. So you're kind of going into that room. Room. To the well, side. I will move into this room. <clears throat> yes, and we're looking to the door to the east. There's no room. <laughs> it. I. I literally see nothing. Oh. Oh. Move here. There's nothing. Oh. Uh. Because of light. Probably. You don't have a light source, do you? No, but it shouldn't be light then immediately dark. Like. Okay. Well, hold still. For... Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, fix it. Throws character everywhere. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, that is interesting. I wonder if it, like, didn't take my movement of the... No, no, the door is gone. I moved the door on the dynamic lighting layer, and it's just being dumb. Um... Oh, wait a minute. I think I might know what's going on. Let's... I think Fib broke it. He sure did. Oh, okay. I get it. Um, so, yeah. Technically, like, as stuff is programmed, it's correct. But kind of shitty. If you move down there, can you see things down the hallway, though? You can see tongues. I see three tongues. A... I don't know. Angelic bamboo? That, that'd one... be a dwarf? No. And then one dwarf. Oh. Um, you seem confused. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what is no. this? so that that is an armored uh fire newt. Okay, yeah. It is well slightly armored. It's like a cast like red bag. face, um, butt face baboon. Sure. Okay. <laughs> it is so, an anyway. armored tongue. Anyway, Zaka comes running in, and ready to do his Zaka things, and. We're gonna do a fight. So, um, these guys have already rolled. I will kind of let things uh, play out. And, oh, I gotta make sure I get my my dwarves on the initiative order so they don't just die pointlessly. Unfortunately, I can't cast my spell because it's too large. Cast it anyway. I mean, I guess I could. Are any of these dwarves spellcasters? Um, probably. Oh, yep, this is being done. Give me a sec. I guess I'm gonna have to grab a different uh different thing okay sorry roll 20 is dumb sometimes all right so um i will roll initiative for these guys using somebody who's statted the same but is technically like kind of different I think that actually worked. Yes. Perfect. All right. So, Gromod, you are in the room. You see combat going on down the hallway. As oh, a the door's small... open now. Uh, yeah, the door was, oh, okay. was open the entire time. Okay. Um, 
but yeah, so so Grandma, do you see this like combat going on down the hallway? There's like a line of uh, <laughs> of fire newts. One of them seeming to be like casting spells at your dwarven friends at the other end of the hall. All right, so it looks like I've got a little bit of line of sight on this one. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to shoot at it with my hunter's bow or with my bow. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't pull out the javelin for this. Uh, I couldn't do a straight line. That oh. object in the middle, I assume, is raised. Oh, yeah, okay. 22 definitely hits. Six points of piercing damage. And... Yeah, this, this fire new just, like, kind of wheels around and uh, looks at you guys with surprise in his little beady eyes and uh, gets ready to probably charge at you guys. But before we can get to that, um, Gromod, are you done with your turn? I am. Okay. Uh, first of all, we gotta get some combat music going here. Second, Lucius, your turn. All right. So that one turns around just in time to see a big snowball go flying over, and I'm gonna smack the different looking one right in the head with it. <laughs> um, okay. So. Level 2 Flaming Sphere, but it is a Snowball, or Ice Sphere. Okay. Um, yep. And yes. So. And a Nexterity save. So. Yes. That is a 3. Alright, he takes 4 <laughs> Ice Damage, and, well, now he has a radiating cold ball of ice next to him. <laughs> Um, cool. and the dwarves just hear a really annoying voice saying, spooling up the shocker. <laughs> and you just see him start, okay. build, they see him start building some electricity up and that'll end my turn. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll put the snowball thing. Uh, okay. Ozaka. Gonna do what she can to get a decent line of sight. And she's gonna shoot. And pew pew. 22 and a 14. Unfortunately, the 14 misses. 22. She shoots the fire newt once. And already it has one shot in its back, one shot in its gut. Uh, still standing. And prepares to charge you guys. Uh, in the meantime, the one that just got snowballed is going to look over its shoulder. Uh, and then I think it's going to point its staff down the hall toward the lot of you. Mm-hmm. And is going to. Mm -hmm. It's going to get counterspelled, is what it's going to do. Is it? If, if I can counterspell it, I'm going to counterspell it. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay, um, yeah, so it does that. Uh, it, you, you watch a, uh, a trio of little fireballs kind of form around the perimeter of the staff, and it, like, shakes the staff in your direction as though to fire the, uh, the blasts your way, and they just fizzle out. <laughs> <laughs> and you just... I turn my outstretched hand into a middle finger and you just see a single bit of lightning arc up and around it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and this thing just... It, it actually doesn't really respond, like, emotionally. It just kind of stares at you. That's fine. Uh, Made Lucy's feel better. Yeah. Um, then the kind of foot soldier fire newts get to go. So we've got one that's going to attack some dwarves. 
Does a little bit of damage here. And then... Okay, so yeah, the one on the front lines against the swings at scimitar. The one behind it is going to try and spit fire like over its friend's shoulder on one of the dwarfs. Um, let's see how that goes. That is, <laughs> yeah, it misses. As the dwarf just kind of like ducks out of the way, and the fire just. Poof, kind of explodes behind him. Uh, then this fire newt that has been shot by you guys a couple times is going to come running up and swing its scimitar twice at the Thorv. First attack is a 21 to hit. Got ties. Okay, so you, yeah, you do get hit for six points of slashing damage. And then second attack, only an 18. So this one you block. And then this fire newt comes running up and Thorv make a dex save. Nice. Okay, uh, yeah, it spits fire at you and you duck out of the way. And uh, yeah, like it kind of just sizzles at your feet, uh, but you're able to avoid the entirety of the damage. Um, oh, sorry, not the entirety, half the damage. So I gotta go back and roll for the other guy, too. Uh, Alright, you take five points of fire damage. And other guy, other dwarf at the other end of the hallway, six points of fire damage. So, write that down. And then, um, hmm. yeah, I think got more fire nudes that are going to come running out, like so. Where are they coming from? The uh, they come running out of, uh, like, over here. Okay, yeah, so the north door. see that thing. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so, packed hallway, but that's about all anybody can really do for right now, well, so... three of them, well, any, actually four of them, if there's one in the doorway, too, take damage from my ice thing that should be... Okay, yeah, go ahead there. and do the thing. Uh, it's, I believe it's a, is it a deck save? Yeah, it's a deck save. Okay. No. I'm also rolling just ass on the damage, but. So it only looks like, uh, one of these things succeeds so in saving. That one takes two, the others take four. Got it. And my snowball persists. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Fib, what do you do? Um, if I stand right next to the and I hit one with a sword... Um, I would say it has substantial cover because you're basically attacking mm -hmm. Um, what would that give it? Like a plus everything. Um, yeah, it's, it's probably like three quarters cover. So it'd be like a plus five to eight. Uh, that's annoying. Okay. How about I'll just, whoop knock my glasses off my face. Good plan. Um, Good plan. 
Okay, I'm just gonna cast Bane on these first three guys then. Okay. Um, and I think it's a just a wisdom save. Charisma, Charisma save. saves. They're charismatic, right? They're very no, they're not. They're not charismatic. <laughs> I mean, the highest roll to 10, so... That, that does miss it. And then uh, Thorpe can have inspiration, because, again, he's right there. Whoops, I just exited my character sheet, but you know what it does. It's a D8. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Can I let Sadie into your room? Oh, yeah. Okay. Tim locked her out. Poor puppy. Um, okay. Sadie? Poor puppy. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, Sirene, what do you do? Okay. Do any of these look like bloodied or anything? Uh, so the one kind of leading the charge against your end of the hallway, pretty torn up. Yeah. Okie dokie. I guess, um, I will just cast... It is a 20 to hit. Uh, yeah. That definitely hits. And is that That's against the, uh, the front one? Damage. And the next person who attacks it has advantage. I still didn't hear. Is that against the front one? S. Okay. Uh, it's dead. Okay. Well, if you attack it, you still have advantage, because it's dead. <laughs> Advantage on corpse desecration. That is it. Okay. Cool. Um, then, dwarves. Dwarves doing things. Dwarves swinging hand axes at lizard things. Dwarves be dwarves. Um, okay. Hand axe. Hand axe. Hand axe. All right, two out of three, Dex. not bad. So we got that, that as a couple of the dwarves, like just carve into this, uh, this fire newt that's like leading the charge on that side. And this one is looking pretty rough. Okay, uh, Thorf. All right, I'll throw ice knife at the armored one. All right. Um, attack roll. Yep. Woo. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Roll another d10. All right. Uh. So yeah, you blast this thing and just like impale it on this massive ice knife. And then then it blows up. Force a bunch of yeah. Then you force a bunch of saves. So um, let's see here. That is deck saves. It's okay, Sadie. Mm, it is not. Okay. And uh, is that your actual DC thirteen? I believe so. Okay. So then um. Both of the regular fire newt foot soldiers succeed, and the other one does as well, unfortunately. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, so, that's it for Thorf. I'll use my action surge as well. Sweet. So after, I'll step forward, use my action surge, and take a couple swings at that guy. All right. Ooh. 
Okay, so like fifteen. Thor just going ham. Um, fifteen just misses, and eighteen hits. So I'll use my inspiration as well. Then. Okay. The one that misses. Don't don't even bother rolling. Oh. Ah. Okay. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Twenty three to hit. That's fine. Um, so yeah, you you like thrash this thing and this next fire newt is looking pretty beat up already after basically having just met you <laughs> all right now the yellow girl mod about using that lightning javelin thing <laughs> yeah i was gonna say as they're soon all... as i see that i'm gonna gesture to grow mod to take the spot right in front of me they're all lined up <laughs> nicely for you get them <laughs> okay um oh no grow mod already yeah there we go so, uh, what does Gromod do? Alright, so this is a dwarf, right? Yes. Alright, I am using my Hunter's Mark on that one and targeting it with my Javelin of Lightning. <laughs> Alright. Ooh! <laughs> 24 definitely fucking hits. <laughs> Okay, and I always forget, so I have to look up the damage real quick on the javelin. And it's a bunch of deck saves for the things that get hit by the lightning, right? It is. Okay. It's a DC 13 dexterity saving throw. Alright, I'm going to get started on those. Uh, Thorv is also going to have to make one. <laughs> That's okay. A little okay. friendly fire isn't a big deal. I can take a few hits. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll take half of 13. Six. Okay. So. Let's tackle these in order. Um, the one in front of Thorv is dead. <laughs> uh, the one after that gets hit and is not dead. The one after that gets hit, taking full damage, not quite dying. We'll get there. Uh, skip the other one for now, be a different roll. Uh, next one, that fails. Looking pretty fucked up. And can't forget to deal the regular piercing damage at the end. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so you killed one, and then, like, a bunch of the other ones are, like, struggling to uh, stay up. And, oh, right. And we have to address this other guy. Uh, that is a 16 on the save. So it does say. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, the caster is still standing, but looking quite beat up as well. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to use the other part of my attack action to do the uh, Hunter's Mark longbow on the one that I you know, dropped my Hunter's Mark on. Yeah. Okay. And uh, with that, you drop that fire need. Cool, cool. Anything else you would like to do? That's it for Royal Mod. Alright. Azaka, then. Trying to come in and... Oh. Did I get skipped? Oh, did you? Oh, yep, because I... Because I accidentally early hit the next button on Royal Mod's turn, so I just hit it for you, too. Ah. Uh, Lucius, you do your thing. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is... My right hand just goes to the sky, and the ball between the legs of the armored one does the exact same. So I need a deck <laughs> okay. save from him. Alright. That's five. He would take nine ice damage to the... I don't know if tongues have nuts, but... I, I mean... was aiming for him. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, if they're there, they have frozen off because that thing is dead. All right. <clears throat> cool. And so the ball just kind of lands on top and starts radiating cold. And uh, with my action, uh, <clears throat> does uh, uh, balls? I keep having to flip back. Sark, um, does mm-hmm. Sark see any enemies out there, or are they all contained to this hallway? Um, he does not see any out on the lot. No. Oh, all or right. Well, he's gonna swoop in above this dwarf's head. And crackling with electrical energy, he's going to run face first into this thing and shocking grasp it. <laughs> and then he's going to fly okay. back out because I'm pretty sure he's he's got the same thing that the flying snake had. And he just doesn't uh, provoke let's, opportunity. Let's double check that one. He might not. If he doesn't, then he stays. But I thought he had that too. He may not. He does not. Then he stays. Okay. Um, so yeah, put him. And I'll just kind of have there. him like fly a little higher so the dwarf can step in. Okay. And uh, an 18 on shock and grasp does hit, cool. and drops this fire dude. Oh, it dropped it. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, then he's hightailing it out of there. He did his thing. There you go. <laughs> Oh, and I just realized if I hit with shocking grasp, the thing can't hit me anyway. So there is that. <laughs> but uh, that'll end my turn. Okay, so now Azaka comes in, trying to kind of bat clean up here. Um, pew, pew, hits. Uh, this one twice and killed. Then he moves this on to this, which, yeah, um, we've got this fire newt here that I guess is gonna. Well, I guess first I'm going to put him at the front so he doesn't just get lost. But then... um, Yeah, second thought, he's probably going to attack in this direction. Um, (laughs) Specifically, I'm going to swing on these dwarves who hem it in and yeah this this thing is starting to fight like it knows it's locked um next fib um yeah fib needs to reach real far so uh chill touch That neither, yeah. neither chills nor touches the enemy. And I, it's, indeed it does not. Well, it <laughs> touches them, it just doesn't come from me. Yeah. Um, this is a dwarf guy right here? Yes. Sure, I'll just do it on him. What? No, he's good. <laughs> oh, he's an ally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I just don't see anyone else the except tongue. this guy. Is this the only guy left? Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought there were more. Nope. Um, yeah, just do it against... She's gonna reach out and gently caress the tongue. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving it a tongue job. Mm. <laughs> yes. Oh, four isn't a lot, huh? Not really, no. Well, you know. Every little bit counts. Yeah, I guess. I can't do good when it's so f- <laughs> And I can't, there are a bunch of dead bodies in the way. I can't get to it. I mean, I think you're doing fine. Yeah, I don't have anything else to do though. Okay. Tierney. I am also going to aim at that one, 
And I'm going to sacred flame it. Okay. Let's see. Deck save. 18. Okay, then. <laughs> That's my turn. Ooh. Dwarves. Doing dwarf things. Hand axe. Hand axe. Hand axe. Two of them hit. One and two. Three. <laughs> somehow, somehow the fire newt is still hanging on, but really torn up. And clearly fighting a losing battle here. Um, okay. So, Dorf. Actually, I think mine was supposed to do another DA. I think it was supposed to go up when I hit five. Now would be the time to check. Yeah, it doesn't. Ooh, it doesn't say at higher level. Oh well. I'm gonna look it up really quick, but you guys keep going. Okay, so Thorv. So... Yeah, um... That's a thing that happens. <laughs> Come running in, uh, you swing and just kind of miss with Bob. I think... I think this, this Fire Newt is getting hit so much and so hard that it it's just hard to like keep your aim quite right uh but then you, you settle down you stop moving plant your feet you know good good solid swing and uh you, you chop away at the thing um however as you do so um you hear the roaring of fire behind you as a um, Balrog. No, not not so much a Balrog, but uh, okay. the dwarves dug uh, too deep. A, a, a sphere that is flaming appears in the hallway. <laughs> flaming sphere. Uh, and uh, does does my ice sphere fight with the flaming sphere? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, is it by me? Because no, it's, it's right behind next to my him. Flaming sphere. Yeah. Um <laughs> so I think it uh it like floats up and like over and just kind of tries to come and bop you on the head. Uh <laughs> Well actually, let me let me make sure I'm not overstepping my bounds here. Um Yeah, no, you can do that. Like Well, just specifically the way it was cast though. Oh. Um, do, 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 do. Does being close to that cold sphere help me? <laughs> uh, that actually hurts you. So. Yeah. Um, I would highly recommend moving away. I can't. Hmm. When you so can. actually, specifically, uh, it doesn't appear like down the hall from you. It appears like on you. Right, right here, like just in this doorway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's gonna do that, and then uh, you are free to continue your turn as you will. I think that's all I'm able to do. Okay, cool. So uh, what you're telling me is you're, you're ending your turn within five. Of both yeah, I, I, yeah. I can't move anymore. Okay. Um, I was well, fine taking the cold one, but uh -oh. yeah. I didn't know there was multiple. <laughs> I didn't either. Well, there are now. Um, so, two decks yeah, saves. two deck saves. <laughs> and hey, what do you know? <laughs> I rolled another <laughs> fucking four. So that's good. You're Ooh, fine. Yay. Hey, you take two from nice. me. So two cold okay. damage. <laughs> and three fire damage. So there you go. You got icy hot. It, it probably felt good. 
with all the you know bumps and scrapes you had from yesterday. Yeah. It's like icy hot. Yep. Freeze yeah. one side of me, cook the other side. There you go. It's, fine. it's all good. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. So then, Groil mod, it is your turn. I can't see any other uh, opponents. Um. All right. I suppose I, I don't know where the uh, flaming spear spear came from. Uh, that is correct. It's just a mystery to me. Um. I'm gonna just stop right there. Okay. Lucius. All right. Well, uh, for my bonus action, my sphere goes into the room to the north because okay. that's the only open doorway that I can see, right, in this hall. Um, I think. Let me let me double check here because the door to the south. Yeah, the door to the south is also. But I've only seen them coming from the north. Correct. Right. Yeah, so I'm going to shove it into the north and move it around until it fucking hits something. Okay. So. Um, it doesn't hit anything. It doesn't hit anything. All right, well, then with the bone, or with my action, I'm going to send Sark into the, or, or I guess I'll tell him to go into the room and see what's going on. See if he can see anybody, and he's going to shocking grasp anybody is in sight. Okay, which room? Uh, to the north. To the north, okay. Uh, avoiding uh, stopping you, where the fireball you... is. Got it. Um, so yeah. You send him in, and yeah. he peers around and sees nothing in the room. There's nothing in this room? Correct. Um, alright. Uh, yeah, he's just gonna... St go into a corner then and stay away from both fireballs okay so um and then movement i'm just gonna kind of move here i just step out of the way got it so. um zaka is going to hold her action to shoot any threat that comes into view And then, um, yeah, so the fireball, or flaming sphere, that appeared as Thor came running by, is going to up and move, and kind of like stair step its way up over the, the snowball and plunk Thorv on the head. <laughs> I was just getting beat up. <laughs> so I need a dex save from Thorv. <laughs> okay. Um right. Right. Let me double check here. Yeah. Yeah, Thor, if you're going to take 10 points of fire damage, as it just, just like roars around the corner and slams down on your head. Um, and then. That ice ball's still not right there, right? No, it moved into the room. Okay. That is true. So let me scoot that up there. Um, well, yeah, he's like swirled it around, so I don't know. We'll say it's corners. That way it's not threatening Thor, because I imagine at least. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I wanted to kind of at least hook it around the corner so that even if Thor walked mm -hmm. in the room, he wouldn't, he wouldn't <laughs> get hit. Okay. Uh, so that's the thing. And then. Um, 
do, 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 do. Other one. Uh, I suppose <laughs> we're gonna see. All right, uh, so yeah. Thor, there is a flash of light as something just barely visible, uh, kind of on a diagonal in the south, uh, alights, and is going to... I'll shout out that he's in there. <laughs> okay. And that's the room to um, the south. Yeah. Okay. All right, and so uh, a, a little, like, blast of fire comes cruising diagonally uh kind of you know cruising from from one corner of the room toward you uh thor but it misses and harmlessly ignites against the wall and that being the case you see a little bit of movement as you just turn to kind of see what the hell that was and that's that. Fib. Um, Fib, I uh, can't see a thing, but goes forward. I just like, where? Where is it? <laughs> and she just keeps walking. She can't see anything. I'm gonna walk over these dead bodies, I guess. I assume you see the giant flaming fireball in there. What's this? Uh, that is... Looks like Fire Newt with armor and a metal staff. And Perfect. And wants to kill you. Okay. Perfect. I'll go in there. Oh, I better make sure I have movement for that. Eh, <laughs> hey, just keep walking. You're fine. Oh, I definitely had to stop right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there's nothing to see. Um, um, I'll just, I mean, I'm just going to dash if there's, okay. I'll just stand on this crate, I guess. <laughs> Give other people <laughs> room to get in here. <laughs> um, I'll throw Royal Mod and Inspiration as I walk past. Okay. Sirene. There you go. Okay. Um, so people are walking down this hallway, right? Uh, yeah, there's still like a, a fiery thing that's trying to murder your friends, and you're not sure where it came from necessarily, but you figure it's got to be around here somewhere. Well, didn't didn't we see just Thor get flamed? Yeah, actually, Thor, Thor, Thor did just call it out. So, yes, yeah, so you do know that there's where a is thing it at? In the south. The south door. Which way is south? Uh, down. down. This way? Okay. Yeah, I guess I should be it, saying Where's down. this door? You're just having all kinds of... Yeah, like, if I go here. here, I see nothing. Oh. Supposed to see something? Um, well, you don't have anything giving you light on dynamic lighting. Oh, uh, no. yes. That flaming sphere would. That is a valid point. And, and actually like, mine does too. I would assume that there's light coming in from a doorway. Well, from the lava to the east, yeah, for sure. Enough to at least see right. the door. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just quick rule, because I don't know off the top of my head, we'll call it like torchlight, basically. So, there's that. Um, uh, 20 foot radius dim and 20 foot... Uh, yeah. Right. So. Okay. <laughs> so, it doesn't really help her in the room so much, uh, but in the hallway, it's a little bit lighter. Yeah. Um. Well, actually, let me let me see. Because if you do, all players see a light. 
Yeah. How's that? <clears throat> and then I'll do the same thing for Lucius's thingamajigger. If it would let me edit it. There we go. There you go. So there should at least be some light in some place that Siren okay. can see. Oh, I see a thing right here. Yeah, you do. Um, I'm not sure how many steps I took to get here. I was here. One, two, three, four, five. Can I stand on these crates? Sure. Okay. Invoke an attack of opportunity? Um, probably, yeah. So it's gonna, like, swing its weird multi purpose, like, staff morning star thing at you. I will stand in front of Fib and protect her. Or you could do that. I don't need your protection. I went over here so let me fight him. Well, if I stand here, I can't see much. And I can so stand actually, here. Can I stand here? It, I mean, I can move around you. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, carry on. Thinking about what? Can I stand here? Yeah. Do the thing. I will stand there. Cool. And. Um. Whatever you said after and got real. I didn't say and, you just said cool, and I was confused because I didn't say anything. Okay. Anyways, I'm just gonna pull out my mace and hit him. Cool. Do very little damage. But you do do some damage. Yes. Okay. Um, Alright, so then... Dwarves! Um, so, also, weird and annoying as it is, um, Cyrene has ended her turn within five Fear. Even though it's through a wall? Let me look at that. I mean, you know what? I, I think I think it's I think it'd be kind of dumb. Um, so yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, dwarves doing dwarf things. Specifically, uh, Mine. They... well, see, here's the thing: they don't want to run through the big fireball. Um. So. They're going to, quote-unquote, hold the perimeter. Which basically means sit back and let you guys do all the... Uh, Thorf. Alright, now step in through the door. Cool. And move one farther in to get farther away from that. <laughs> okay. And get that guy with an axe, maybe. Alright, yeah. Yeah. Do the thing. Uh, so you start hacking away. And this guy is nowhere near as um, apt at this whole combat thing as his friends were. <laughs> Turns out, once he's not hiding behind his flaming spheres and all that stuff, he's really not that tough. Hey, so, that sounds familiar. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's he's still alive, but you're you're kind of kicking his ass right now. Alright, then I'll use my second win to get some health back. Cool. Groil mod. Groil mod runs into the room, goes to see us in this corner here. Moves his hunter's mark there. <laughs> and that's no good. Uh, you would think so. <laughs> but actually... <laughs> Wow, that guy's worse than I am. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, goody. So, uh, I'm a yeah, that... hit. 
Yeah, so so that'd be one shot uh, that that lands on him, and he's looking to be in like dire dire straits. Ooh. And before you even get to yeah. really notice that, the second arrow just <laughs> drops him. Beautiful. So did he just did he just like shit his pants when we all came in here? <laughs> I mean, probably a little bit. <laughs> if tongues could have pants or shit them. Tongues. I feel like tongues could have pants. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So anyway, uh, that being done, the uh, fire newt menace having been uh, at least seemingly put to an end here in Rockamar. Um, I think we'll we'll kind of go through the the resolution of this whole thing uh, next time, including you guys uh, getting your board that Sithy promised you. Yep, forty pounds of adamantite or adamantine each, I believe, right? Yeah, it was a lot. I don't remember the exact number, but it was it was quite a bit. Sweet. So yeah really heavy shit that you can carry all the way back to Port Nine Zaru with you. <laughs>